everybody it's felisa it is an overcast day in the neighborhood on this dreary wednesday morning um i don't like the gray if it's not gonna rain so i'm hoping that we get some rain because y'all know how much i love my rain anyway um so uh this morning i was um looking at one of the facebook Facebook groups that I'm in y'all know how I love my groups and um, there was a question that was posed um, asking how women deal with rejection and you know I kind of thought about that and my, my response was I I've never been rejected by anybody that I thought was cute or you know somebody maybe like in, in middle school or something like that that's some guy that I was crushing on um, uh, or you know somebody that I really 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 thought you know we were going to get together I don't know but I, outside of high school I really can't think of a situation in which I've been rejected and that's primarily because I don't pursue men I think I told y'all this um I just you know I'm super old-fashioned when it comes to things like that um I don't I don't give out my number unsolicited I don't like I feel like men know what they want when they see it and I'm just not your girl if you expect it from me so now start chasing after you that's just you no know, no nope, nope, all the no nope. anyway but I did say that you know have I been rejected by somebody that I love and the answer is absolutely yes and that is the worst form of hurt and pain and infliction of trauma and for me it triggered all of my daddy issues, all of my abandonment issues, all of my rejection issues, and it put me in therapy. Now, I'm saying all of this to say that there are so many times when people are carrying baggage that is triggered by something else, particularly like in this event, it would be rejection. Um, but in the context of a relationship, the pain is so searing that you don't really know how to respond to that and you don't really know how, how you're even supposed to react. When I talked about um, breaking up or in my breakup survival video, I talked about, you know, the, going through the anger stage and being very reactionary and, you know, it's very volatile. And, you know, the reason that it's so volatile is that that anger is fueled by pain. It's fueled by disappointment. It's fueled by, you know, crushed dreams. It's fueled by disappointment. It's fueled by, you know, everything negative that you probably can think of that is really being the jet fuel, the the kerosene, the combustible igniter for that anger. And that's why it comes out in the way that it does, where people become very impulsive, um, very driven, um, very, you know, like I said, reactionary. That underneath it all is pain. The flip side of that is bitterness because anger, um, Unmet needs and unresolved issues turned outward is anger, turned inward is bitterness. So when you have unmet needs, when someone is rejecting you, and particularly if they give you the silent treatment like I talked about in another vlog, and I don't really want to rehash that, but if y'all doing that to people when you haven't given the common courtesy of closure, and you know and I'm saying? All things being equal. I'm not saying that this person is abusive or if this person is you know, they're a, a danger and a threat to you. No, you just stop talking to them because it's just convenient for you. You know, y'all, mm -mm, no, no, there's a special place in hell for people like that who torment people with the never ending, open ended, you know, like why? And so, you know, if you're in that situation, you're gonna have to find your own closure because that individual is too much of a coward and is not mature enough to give it to you. And it's unfortunate. However, going back to what I was saying, um, you know, if you have um, a situation where, you know, you are really struggling, where you're really, you know, trying to put the pieces back together, where you're really, you know, thinking about how this person did this to you and those needs have been unmet, you have unresolved issues with these people and, you know, for whatever reason, you're not getting the closure that you want, internalizing that will lead to bitterness, allowing that to just <laughs> display to the world comes across as being very angry my recommendation always is 
get yourself into counseling. I don't know why counseling is such a taboo thing, particularly in the African American community. It's so many walking wounded among us. It's so many people who are playing with pain. It's so many people who have emotional baggage and they think they're fine. They don't want to talk about it. They don't want to deal with their emotions. They just slap a band-aid on it and then they just, you know, trot off into the publics and damage everybody that they come in contact with. A lot of us have emotional baggage. A lot of us have emotional baggage that has nothing to do with the current relationship that we're in. It might be influenced by it, but it doesn't really have anything to do with it. A lot of us who have had terrible relationships, the emotional baggage did not start with that terrible relationship. A lot of us, the emotional baggage started and we started to pack that emotional baggage in childhood. Has everything to do with, for me, you know, my dad and our relationship and growing up without him and growing up, you know, as a kid who was very much a daddy's girl. And when he left, that triggered something in me that was, took me years, years to actually come to grips with and and heal. And I don't know that I am fully healed. I, I will say that my father passed away in 2015. I'm so grateful that we got an opportunity to reconcile. I loved him with everything in me, but there was still a breach in our relationship that we could never recover because he left and he was gone for 20 years. So from the age of 20, I mean, from the age of six to 26, I did not have a father. I had a father figure up until I was 15, 16, and that was my grandfather. So for 10 years, from 16 to 26, I had no fatherly influence, no fatherly covering, no, no father to really pour into me. I had no man in my life who really could build me up. And so, you know, a lot of that fueled my self-esteem issues. It fueled my my codependence, my, my ability to be codependent in relationship, which is how I, I how I fell victim to my husband, quite frankly. But all of those are learning lessons, are le lessons to be learned, and those are lessons that I did not just learn for myself. I learned those for my daughters because, unfortunately, because of who I married and because I did not select well and because of of the nature of our divorce and you know ultimately the demise of our relationship my daughters and my sons did not have the benefit of a father just like I did not and so this became a cycle and I was determined to break the cycle with my children particularly my girls and you know it was very important that they be around men who were consistent who demonstrated effort who demonstrated um I don't know, just d demonstrated that connectivity and that dependence to show them that all men were not created equal, that all men were, were not like their father, because that is certainly and sincerely something that I wish that I could have experienced when I was a little girl. And, you know, so anyway, that, that I kind of got off on a tangent, but that's so important. Going back to therapy, I think that it's important to learn how to unpack that baggage because just as sure as you pack that bag, you're gonna take it with you. Who travels without luggage? If you forget your luggage, you feel naked and bare. And that's a lot of reason why uh, people don't want to unpack that luggage. They don't wanna unpack that baggage because it's so familiar. You've been carrying it around like it's some kind of Louis Vuitton limited edition. You really think that this is not a problem for you, but that bag is a weight. That bag is an albatross. That bag is preventing you from actually seeking and getting and being rewarded with the type of relationships, not just the intimate ones, but the type of depth and relationships that you actually deserve, that actually would be meaningful for you. You know, if you find yourself compromised in every relationship that you have, both your personal relationships, you know, your friendships, y'all fall in and out, you know, y'all can't halfway, 
um stay friends because y'all keep falling out for something trivial and stupid you know you don't get along with your you know with your colleagues at work you always have something to complain about them you don't get along with your administration or your management or whatever you call them um your superiors i hate to say that but you know your your directors your bosses you don't get along with them they get on your nerves they picking on you they finding some reason to do such such if you always have a complaint about everybody in your life you have no interpersonal relationships and then in your own relationships if you've been lucky to find love, if you've been blessed enough to have someone who brings joy to your life, you sabotage that. You sabotage it. You know, you... <laughs> You do everything in your power to make sure that that relationship does not work. And then when it does not work and it's a, a self-fulfilling prophecy, then you point to everything that's wrong with that person in order to justify what you just did. But that's that baggage, getting too close to that baggage. Nobody wants to unpack that. I really, really, really encourage you and admonish you to make a phone call today. Find a therapist, find a psychologist, find a counselor. If you don't have insurance, I certainly understand that. And I, I recognize that I'm blessed to be able to take advantage of not only insurance, but we also have um, an a employee assistance program at my job where we, are, we have access to, to licensed therapists or counselors as we need it um, without penalty to our insurance. But please research community mental health agencies um, in your area that have low cost or free counseling services. Find a support group, you know, particularly surrounding grief and loss. If you're having issues with that, if you're having issues with substance abuse, there's all kinds of support groups um, all across the nation that meet in churches and hospitals and synagogues and schools. Um, they meet in coffee shops, they in libraries. They meet all over the place because it's so important to remain connected and these people recognize that they can't do this alone. Stop heavy lifting by yourself because it's killing you and it's killing your relationships and it's just not a healthy way to be. I'm Felisa. I hope that y'all have a wonderful Wednesday. We're almost there. Everybody celebrates Friday, but I'm celebrating Wednesday because, yes, we're halfway home, honey. Y'all enjoy the rest of your week and I will talk to y'all later on. Bye.